Hi friends. I hope you all are watching the series. You're loving the toys and making them at home. So in today's story, I'm not going to tell you who is it about. And I'm sure you can guess it at the end of the story. Let's start. So the hero of our today's story was a great inventor, but he also was a great teacher. He taught at the Boston School for the Deaf Children. He was encouraged and he learned the sign language in his teenage only, when his mother had started losing her hearing ability. His father also encouraged him and taught him allocations, that is, how to speak clearly and without making errors. One day, he entered the classroom at the Boston School and as he entered, he kept a glass in front on a table of the room. Everyone observed this glass carefully. He told all the students in sign language. He started walking away from the table. All the students started looking at the glass once and then towards him. He kept walking and went at the back of the classroom and climbed the table. What is he up to? All the children wondered. Suddenly he jumped on the floor and there was a huge sound. The kids were looking at the glass. As he jumped on the floor, the glass on the table at the front fell down on the ground and started rolling. All the kids were in surprise. How did the glass fell on the ground? He then explained that sound is nothing but vibrations. He asked all the kids in the class to keep their hands on the throat and shout aloud. Can you do it with me? Just keep your hands on your throat and shout. Ah! Can you hear the vibrations? Yes. Everyone started shouting. See, you all can feel the vibrations, right? He said. Even if you cannot hear the sound. In the similar manner, you can also feel the vibrations of every word and start to try to speak, he said. He built a confidence in every one of them and told them at least try to attempt to speak. As the class finished, he went back to his experiment room where he was working on a telegraph machine. A telegraph is a device for transmitting and receiving messages over long distance. A telegraph message sent by an electrical telegraph operator using Morse code was known as a telegram. His room was all filled with copper coils and wires. It's working, it's working. Watson was happily singing. Watson was teacher's friend helping him in his research. Now we can send four messages over one telegraph wire, teacher happily said. Watson, we should be able to send sound across these wires, he continued. They both worked hard and finally could transmit sound through wires. If we can send a sound over the wire, then why not the human voice, teacher said. And there was the first idea of a telephone. Now you all must have guessed who am I talking about, right? He was the one who imagined that we could talk to each other over long distances and the imagination led to the invention of a telephone. Yes, you're right. I'm talking about Alexander Graham Bell. It was just an idea at that time. Still, people were not ready to fund it as they thought it was a very silly and impossible idea to build. But Bell did not give up as he had himself told the students that they at least needed to try to speak before giving up. So he could not give up on his own idea himself, right? There was a student named David in his class who was afraid to speak and he didn't even try because some funny noises came out of his throat when he had tried. 
Bell always told him, David, you'll never be able to speak if you fear of people and stop trying. So you need to at least try before fail. He was encouraged and tried without talking in public. Watson, Bell's friend in his lab, also thought that telephone was a silly idea. But Bell said, Oh, nothing's impossible, my friend. We are all on the verge of something very great here. Can I do and keep on trying? At least, he asked. And so they started trying again. One person had to speak from one room and the other one tried to hear from the other room. They did this for a long time and many days. Could you do this for a while? I'm losing my voice, Watson said. All right, Mr. Watson, Bell said. Now Bell started speaking and they started to test the apparatus again. One afternoon when they were experimenting in the lab, Bell was trying to speak from one end of the apparatus. They were testing it. Mr. Watson, come here. I need to see you. Watson in the other room stood up and went to Bell. What? He said. Bell said, you called me. Watson said, what did I say? Bell said, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. It was crystal clear. Bell, Mr. Bell. Watson happily replied and started dancing. They were happy as they had finished and finally invented the telephone. What can we learn from this story? We at least need to try without the fear of failing and keep on trying till we succeed. I love this story and I'm going to try even if I fail. Try again and again till I succeed. I know you will do it too. And now let's make a toy. So for today's toy, I have brought a very traditional toy and you all must be knowing this toy. Many of you must have made this toy and who have not made this toy, please do so. We just need a thread and two glasses. Uh, you can take uh, paper glasses too and make small holes at the end of the glasses. And now we are going to weave this thread along. Let's do it. 